for hundreds of millions of years. An abundance of large animals, the megafauna, was a prominent feature of the land and oceans. However, in the last few tens of thousands of years, a blink of an eye on many evolutionary and biochemical timescales, something dramatic happened to Earth's ecology. Megafauna largely disappeared from the vast areas, rendered either actually or functionally extinct. Only in small parts of the world do megafauna exist at diversities anything close to their previous state, and in many of these remaining regions, they are in a state of functional decline through population depletion and range contraction. In the modern world, Africa has more large megafauna than any other region, this being the reason it's such a popular safari destination. However, there are still plenty of interesting animals which live there in the Pleistocene epoch but are now extinct. The only continent that can compete with Africa in terms of large animals is Asia. But why do Africa and Asia have so many giant animals compared to the rest of the world? Two primary things determine how susceptible a species is to extinction, size, and specialty. Large species tend to evolve only during long periods of environmental stability, as with specialized species. When that stability is disrupted, they don't cope well. If a species only eats one type of food, say bamboo or eucalyptus, that's fine as long as that food remains plentiful. But if the food source becomes scarce, the dependent species will likely not survive. Large species require a lot of food and space and tend to reproduce much slower than small species. That makes them vulnerable to environmental changes. The Americas, Europe, and Australia have been home to many large species some quite recently, but many have gone extinct now. The higher latitudes of those continents underwent major galactic shifts as the Ice Age ended. Species in northern Asia were similarly wiped out. Lower latitudes, while certainly still impacted, underwent less drastic changes, so species in those places were less likely to go extinct. Let's turn the clock back about 20,000 years or so, in a world very different from our own. New Guinea isn't an island, the Baltic Sea is more of a Baltic lake, and Tampa, Florida is a few hundred kilometers inland. But more important for our purposes, the wildlife of this planet is much different too. On the steppes of North America, one-ton ground sloths live alongside mastodons and mammoths, bears as big as cows, and camels seven feet tall. In the skies, there are giant pteratorns and some of the largest ever felines prowl the prairies. Closer to the equator, South America's tropical savannas are home to spiky, car-sized armadillos, giant sloths much larger than even their northern cousins, and a wide variety of huge, hoofed mammals of unfamiliar orders like the latopterns and notungulates. Across the Pacific, in New Zealand, Flightless birds are standing three and a half meters tall and one of the largest eagles ever to exist. In neighboring Australia, you'll find rhino-sized wombats, seven-meter-long lizards, and spike-tailed turtles longer than you are tall. Even Europe is a land of giants. In the regions not buried beneath the Eurasian ice sheet, there are elephants like woolly mammoths and four species of rhinoceros. Among the carnivores are enormous bears, as well as leopards, lions, and hyenas. So, returning from our quick journey through time, it's clear that, at one point, the rest of the world did have a wide variety of megafauna, wider even than those of Africa and Asia today. So, why have more giant animals survived on these continents? Extinction is, fundamentally, always a result of the change. The more rapid the change, the more widespread the extinction. When looking at the last 20,000 years, the main driver of change, unsurprisingly, has been one pesky, destructive species, Homo sapiens. Various waves of humans migrating with different levels of technology could each be viewed, in some ways, as a new invasive species. Each wave would have unique impacts and most would cause some level of native extinction. When the first humans crossed into North America, they, along with the end of the Ice Age, drove many large animal species to extinction. Some species would likely have gone extinct purely for climactic reasons, 
some solely due to the actions of those first Native Americans, and many went extinct due to the combination of these two pressures. As with any invasive species, those humans and their new environment eventually reached a balance. In other words, the invasive humans became naturalized. Africa, of course, is the continent where said species originated. The wildlife here has seen the gradual evolution of modern humans from earlier hominin species, and then the slow development of new hunting technologies over the millennia. As such, large animals in Africa have been the least affected by overhunting. That's not to say that there were no extinctions in Africa. Various giant antelope species such as the Megalotrigus or Hippotrigus gigas, the enormous buffalo pelorovis, the Carthaginian elephant, and the weird, wildebeest-like Rusingorix all fell victim to the quaternary extinction event. And that's not to mention islands like the Canaries, Seychelles, and Madagascar, which took much longer for humans to reach. Here, the faunal changes were as drastic as in most of the world. But what about Asia? Humans migrated there. So, why is it any different from Europe or North America? The answer, it seems, is that Homo sapiens colonized the southern part of Asia, Indomalaya, the part with all the megafauna, in several slow waves, starting as early as perhaps 125,000 years ago. Because of this, the Asian wildlife had time to warm up to humans. Granted, places like Northern Asia, Japan, the Philippines, and floors, which weren't colonized till later, did experience drastic turnovers in large fauna, and even Indomalaya saw its fair share of extinctions. Animals like the giant giraffe Sivatherium, the eastern spotted hyena, and a variety of bovines all went extinct in southern Asia. Among the fallen here is the 22-ton elephant, Paleoloxodon nematicus, the largest ever land mammal on record. However, other giant animals, like the Asian elephant, Indian rhinoceros, and water buffalo have survived because of the slow, pulsating way in which humans settled the Indo-Malayan region. That being said, as technological advancements have accelerated, Africa and Asia have been subject to rapid change. Countless species here are on the brink. Unless we make an effort to conserve wildlife in these regions, in all regions for that matter, they will share the same fate as the other continents. It must be noted that both climate and humans caused many small animal species to go extinct as well, but there were more of those species to begin with, so it was a smaller percentage and we were left with more of them. Across time, when we see mass extinction events, we see the large species being the most affected and the smaller species being more likely to survive. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.